it's Bethany and welcome to Saturday Knit Live. So this episode is going to be a little bit different. My birthday is in two days. So I have been a bit busy with work and with other things. So I did not record our studio session for this week. That will be next week. But I hope you enjoy the video. Let's get into it. So this is a little bit of a different video. I was going through my scraps to try to get rid of my scraps for this year. And I found this ball of DK weight yarn left over from my sweater. And then I found stashed away these three uh, swatches that I knitted before I worked my sweater. And for me, because the sweater is finished, this seems like a waste just to leave them like this. So I have decided that I'm going to painstakingly, I've already kind of started it, painstakingly separate these swatches. And I did not cut along the back here. So this is one continuous piece, as are these, and connect them to this ball so that I can knit myself a DK weight hat to match my sweater. Um, I've weighed them out already with my scale to find out that I have enough to make the hat that I'm planning to make. So I'm going to kind of show you how I do that. Um, there's going to be plenty of cuts, so you're not just going to sit here for uh, four hours watching me <laughs> separate this yarn, but I am going to kind of show you, um, I'll start with this one that I haven't started with. And here, here's my beginning end here, and my bind off end should be on this side, somewhere, here it is. So there's my bind off end. So I just kind of, I'm just using a tapestry needle here. You could use a crochet hook. Um, I don't want to cut this yarn necessarily because I don't want to lose any of the yardage but I'm just kind of going in and tugging around to see where the yarn loosens and this is fiddly there we go and it's just gonna kind of unzip if I did my bind off right which I'm gonna come there you go. So it's just going to unzip itself until I get to a place where I've probably split the yarn at some point. But I'm going to continue to do this on all three of these swatches and I'm going to end up with this ramen noodle yarn. So I'm going to pause here, finish this, and I'll come back and show you how I get this straight. Okay, so now I've got my three piles of what used to be <laughs> a uh, sweater swatches. And um, in case I didn't mention this, this is this yarn is by Hugh Loco. It's in their DK Merino base, and I loved this for a sweater. It was so comfortable. I should say is so comfortable and I could definitely see myself knitting with this base in a different color for another sweater but anyway the next thing that I'm going to use is called a Nitty Naughty now mine breaks down and it's it's quite old it's almost 12 years old so the company that made this one um, Paisley Fibers is not open anymore but the way this works is, you know what, I'm going to make it smaller because this is smaller. So it has two different sizes. You can either make it really big or I'm going to section it out and just make it small. So these pieces all connect together and some nitty knotties do not separate. But the idea is that one section goes one way and one section goes the other. And we're going to be making a loop. Let's see, I will raise myself up so you can see what I'm doing. 
Um, so we'll move these guys out of the way so you can see a little bit better. There's the end I just had. <laughs> I keep setting it down. Here it is. Okay, so we're going to just make a little slip knot. I like to start off and put it just on the end there because we're going to be taking that off when we're done. But let's make it higher so you can really see what I'm doing. The idea of the Nitty Knotty is to make, sorry about that. I haven't used this in a while. <laughs> so we're both gonna learn today. Um, I'm getting tangled in myself. Anyway, so the idea of the Nitty Knotty is that you want to make yourself, you're gonna be making a skein again. So you're just making a big loop. And it doesn't need to be tight. You don't need to put a bunch of tension on this yarn because in the end, in the next step I'll show you kind of what we're gonna do. So we're gonna soak it and get all of the kinks and the wrinkles out of the yarn so that we can get an even tension when we're knitting. and our project will black out nicely. So I'm gonna keep doing this, and then I'll show you what I am gonna do next. And I'm gonna do this on all three, all right? Now I didn't mention this either, but when you get to the end, you're gonna have a little bit left over. I, I just like to tie it in a little like half knot, not super tight to the end. And the way you get this off, of mine specifically, is I just take one of the arms off. And there's my skein. Okay. And just to kind of set it aside for a moment, I'm just gonna twist it on itself. And set it aside so I can finish these other two. Now, because I am not an influencer, I you can also do the same thing with two friends' hands, like a friend's hands, wrap them around, just keep a good tension, or on the back of a chair. Um, you can do the same thing. I just happen to have a nitty knotty um, that doesn't get a lot of use, so I figured I could actually use it. So the next thing that you're gonna do with these is you're going to soak them. And I like to use these things to soak them. I like to soak my items in a wash tub. This was really inexpensive. I got it off of Amazon and it has a removable drain. You don't need something fancy like this. A bathroom sink or a bathtub will work just fine or a bucket and then I Right now I'm using this as my wool wash. So I'm going to take this into my kitchen. I'm gonna fill it up with cool water, separate these so they look like loops and just kind of sit them in there and I'm gonna leave them alone for about 30 minutes with just a couple drops of these. And it might be longer than 30 minutes because I tend to lose track of time. <laughs> Anyway, once these are soaked, they will kind of loosen up, and then I'll show you what I do next. Okay, so I only waited 10 minutes, but already they're looking very, very straight. Ignore my husband making coffee in the background. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to take these downstairs and hang them up to dry, and I'll show you kind of how I do that. They need to hang and drip dry overnight so that in the morning they are dry enough for me to cake up on my cake lighter. Okay, so we are currently in my basement. My husband's hanging some hats to dry, but I am just gonna hang these guys on my little Ikea octopus buddy here. Usually this is where I dry my 
knitted socks once I wash them. But there is a kind of a mat under here that these will all drip dry onto. And I'll check them in the morning. Okay, so it is the next day. Um, this is kind of gonna kind of be weird to film. But these are all dry. And something that I didn't mention is that these loops, mine are relatively small, so there's not a lot of yarn here, so I only put one tie on. But I save my yarn scraps. What you can do is you can tie in a few other places so that they don't get tangled in about three or four more places if you have larger skeins than I do. But I'm gonna kind of show you what I do next to turn these into balls of yarn. So I have my Swift here, and I'm not sure if I'm in frame. <laughs> and I have my ball winder. These are not necessary. Again, you can use the back of a chair or have a friend hold their hands out like this. Um, but I'm gonna use what I have because I don't have a friend on hand. And I'm gonna lock it onto my Swift. And you can see all of the kinks pretty much came out. This yarn looks like it would have come off of the skein from the store. So if you have ties, you would cut them off. I don't, I just have my ends here. So I'm gonna kind of untie the real small knot that I had, wind it into the tensioner on the winder. And I like to hold my yarn as I wind to give it a little bit more tension. And I'm just gonna do this on all three of them. And this is gonna make a ball that I can wind or knit from the center or from the outside called a cake if you're not familiar with what these things do. Both of these items are really inexpensive, especially around the holidays when stores have them on sale. Mine are from a company called Knit Picks, um, which is um, sells pretty affordable yarn, needles, and uh, tools. Anyway, so here's my little yarn cake. And I'm going to do this on the other three. And now I can knit whatever I want out of these. And I don't have kinked up yarn that's going to make my tensioning weird. So, okay, so now I have all of my yarn is unkinked, it is balled up, it is ready to go. But for me, I don't like a bunch of balls floating around. I like one continuous one makes it a lot easier for me. So a lot of people would wait and join these later. I, if it's the same yarn for me, and it's going to be a knit for me, and I'm basically getting rid of a lot of scraps. I know that's a lot of qualifiers, but bear with me. I'm trying to use my scraps. I'm trying to use them smartly. And because this is about enough for a hat that I want to make, this is, and it's for me, I'm going to join these together. So the method I like to use, some people like to use something called the magic knot, some people like to split splice, some people like to just weave their ends in later. This is the method I like to use, and I call it the sliding knot. I don't know what its technical name is, but I'm gonna try to show you kind of how I do it. So your two ends of yarn, you're going to, and I'm not gonna walk, I'm not gonna speak through this, mainly because I'm just going to trip over my words. So I'm just going to try to show you at this angle, and then I'm going to try to zoom in on the next ball to show you what I'm doing. So. One knot. Two knots. And then they slide together. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit more and I'm going to do that on the next one. Oops. 
Oops. One knot. And this is, you can see they are together. Now, if I wanted to take them apart, I could, but I don't want to. So they are, as long as I'm knitting with good tension and I block this out nicely, these aren't going anywhere. Now you don't need to have really long ends like me, but I prefer the longer ends so I know where the knot is and I don't clip these when I'm done. Um, they'll be on the inside of the hat it's, it's up to you whether you clip them. If I were to clip them, I would clip them about this short. I would still leave a bit of an end to hang on to. That's just my preference. So once I'm all done, these will all be wound into this one ball and ready to go for a sweater. Well, this, this one's a hat, but so I really hope that this helped. If not, thanks for watching anyway. <laughs> um, I hope that this helped you in all honesty to be able to delve into your stash, whether that's a frogged item or swatches or just scraps that you can use. Because if it's not sitting there bringing you any kind of satisfaction, whether that's looking at a finished swatch and loving it, keep it. Obviously, this is, this is your creation. But if it's sitting there and you're not sure what to do with it, and it's really nice yarn, or it's maybe your favorite color, think about maybe frogging those swatches, or think about maybe combining your scraps into a scrappy project. And maybe you'll get some some new inspiration and new fulfillment out of using up your scraps or your frogged yarn. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm Bethany with Saturday Knit Life, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!